know about you, but I've been truly blessed. This has been a real, real blessing. This happened um, to the disciples in the Sea of Galilee, and several years ago, I had the opportunity to visit Israel with some pastors. A group of us went there, and one of the highlights was actually crossing the uh, Sea of Galilee, um, where the disciples went through that frightening experience there in this uh, sea. Now, <clears throat> some time ago, the Sea of Galilee, it kind of receded, it kind of went back, and they found a boat from the time of Jesus. I think you see a picture of it here. <clears throat> the, way, the reason they know that is because of the nails, the way it was put together. So we got a chance to be there, and they took some of us pastors to some special places where we could see some history. But um, this morning... This morning, we are going to see uh, the disciples in a real frightening situation. I think it could help us. I hope it helps us as we uh, face also, sometimes we face fear, anxiety, worries. We're in this planet, so we're going to go through different experiences. So I've entitled the sermon, uh, God is Bigger Than Our Storms. <clears throat> so I invite you to open your Bible so you can follow on the screen Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. It says, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern. This is Jesus. Jesus, he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? You know, storms can be frightening. When I was in the army, I was um, stationed. I went from, um, what was it? <laughs> it was in Washington. Um, that, that uh, base there, I was sent from there to Texas to be a medic, a uh, corpsman. And um, I spent some time there. Um, it was helicopter training, you know, medics, corpsmen, you work with um, the injured, those that are not uh, doing well, give, you give injections. Okay, that's another story. But anyway, <clears throat> I was sent there. And my last base was in uh, Fort Lee, Virginia. And in Fort Lee, Virginia, one, uh, we got a little long 
weekend. In fact, it was about five days, some days. And so what we did with some of my friends, some of my buddies, we, um, we went off to Cape Hatteras in North Carolina. We went out there to camp. And we were swimming out there, but we noticed, <clears throat> we noticed that when we got to the camp, there was hardly anybody there. And it's a real tourist place, a place, you know. Then we found out that there was a hurricane on the way. It was uh, Hurricane Gladys. This was back in 68. So <clears throat> we said, you know, we came this far. Uh, I, let's, let's stick around. Let's stay. See, have some fun, you know. So um, we decided to stay there. And we were playing ball. We were jumping waves. We were having a great time. The next morning, when we awoke, the place was dark. It was lightning. I mean, it totally changed. The winds were terrible. And it got worse. And what happened was, you know, we hardly had time. A uh, ranger came by in a little green pickup and just pff, honking his horn. And I remember the light poles were just flashing. They were just flashing, and you never seen anyone pack up so quick. We packed up so quick, and uh, what was happening, I learned later, they have these panels. They have these panels on the light poles. And when there's danger, they flash. I mean, they just... Phew. And being from California, I had no idea what was going on. I mean, so anyway, we were some of the last to get out of that place. We crossed the bridge, and there was a line of cars evacuating. That was a... Talking about a frightful situation. It was a terrible storm, but we made it. We made it to the other side and made it to the base. Now, the disciples were experiencing, the Bible tells us, on the Sea of Galilee, they were experiencing anxiety, fear, fear, anxiety. They were worried for their lives. I mean, that storm was terrible. And... Um, the last verse in, uh, well, not the last, but verse 37 in Mark 4, verse 37, it says, <clears throat> And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was stealing. In other words, the boat was already getting water in it, big waves. You know, I can't adequately describe this, but there's a quote that I found in Desire of Ages, pages uh, 301, 302, <clears throat> describes it well. The sun had set. The blackness of night settled down upon the stormy sea. Stormy, the waves lashed into fury by the howling winds, dashed fiercely over the disciples' boat, and threatened to engulf it. <clears throat> Those hardy fishermen had spent their lives <clears throat> on the lake and had guided their craft safely through many a storm. But now, their strength, their skill availed nothing. They were helpless in the grasp of the tempest. And hope failed them as they saw that their boat was failing. And then verse 38, going back to the word, says, Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? The disciples were experiencing, it says, fear and anxiety, worry. They were worried for their lives. The Bible states that they were exceedingly frightened. You know, Dr. Collins, a Christian psychologist, he says that there are, um, there's fear, there's fear and anxiety have a variety. There's a, for example, the acute chronic, there's a mo uh, moderate, there's a, um, normal. The disciples were experiencing the worst kind. I mean, they were frightened. They didn't think they were going to make it. And we are told by this Christian psychologist that fear and anxiety, worry can have unhealthy effects on us. And there's some of us that go through these different experiences that are talking here, that they're, they're, he's talking about here. Such the physical reactions such as headaches, backaches, rash, Shingles, and um, also there's some psychological effects or reactions to fear, anxiety when you're going through something 
really tra traumatic. We're told that uh, it affects one's thinking, and this happened to the disciples. He, he makes some real nice comments here. This happened to the disciples. That it affected their thinking, their memory. They couldn't remember it. Jesus was in the boat. He was sleeping, and, you know, it affects you in many ways. <clears throat> he, he goes on to say it affects our creativity, our originality. Um, <clears throat> they also affect us having smooth relationships with people. And, and people get irritated when they're, they're going through anxiety, fear. Now, there's also some healthy, there's also some healthy reactions to fear and anxiety and worry. Uh, spiritual reactions. Fear can motivate us when we're really fearful, we're going through a bad experience, to, to seek Jesus and um, our need, you know, go to Jesus and cast our fears, our anxieties upon him. As Christians, we can do that. We can go to the Lord and uh, give him charge, control of our lives as the disciples did in the midst of this storm. Once again, there's positive fear and anxiety. That is healthy because it protects us. We get out of a dangerous situation. If we're in a, like us at that camp, I mean, we were all scared. We were all frightened. So we got out of there. <clears throat> we didn't stick around. So there's some positive uh, reactions to fear. But you know that these disciples forgot two very, very important things that we should not forget. They forgot something that they should have remembered. Jesus was sleepy. They forgot that Jesus was in the boat. You know, they were so afraid. Jesus was sleeping, we're told, in the part of the front of the boat, by the stern, on a cushion. And the truth of the matter is this. As long as Jesus is in the boat, that boat will not sink. And so we need to remember this. No, the storm got so violent, the clouds, the darkness... The lightning. The disciples forgot that Jesus was with them. That Jesus was in that boat. Yes, we find ourselves, you and myself, I have found myself, let's put it that way, in threatening situations. Not only as a soldier, but as many other situations in life. You find yourselves in situations, you know, there's health challenges. Uh, natural disasters, people are afraid of natural disasters. We just had a 0.41 in uh, Corona <clears throat> this past week. Financial loss. And sometimes we forget, when we're going through worry, when we're going through anxiety and fear, we forget that Jesus is with us as Christians. Many times we forget. Like the disciples, yes. They forgot that Jesus was with them. A lot of times that happens to us as well through life storms when we're going through difficult times. But you know what? <clears throat> God is bigger than our storms. God is all-powerful, almighty. The other thing they forgot, you know what they forgot? They forgot that Jesus always fulfills his word. He fulfills his word. In verse 35, Jesus said to them, we are going to the other side of the lake. If Jesus says we're going to the other side of the lake, we're going to get there. There might be storms, tough times, hard times, but Jesus is going to get us there. And they forgot. You know, the Bible tells us, you know, that they, uh, Jesus was very, he had a plan. Jesus had a plan of ministry. <clears throat> That's why they were going to Galilee, to the other side of the lake, because he had a plan. He had healings to do, miracles to do, preaching to do, teaching to do. So he had a plan for them to go to the other side of the lake. They forgot about that plan. When the storms come, when fear comes, anxiety comes, you know, we forget that Jesus is with us. He's going to get us to the other side. But when storms come, when things get tough, when things get rough, I know, you know, Sometimes we forget that God has a plan for each one of us. God has a plan for you. He had a plan for them. We're going to the other side of the lake. When things get rough, and, and I mean, they were in a terrible storm. That storm, I mean, and uh, you know, 
How often do we forget? Do we forget that God's promises, when we're going through a storm, and there might be somebody here this morning that's going through a difficult time, whatever it may be, whatever the circumstances, we forget God's promises. We forget that what God promises, He fulfills. And we need to remember that He's in the midst of our storms. We're not alone. If there's someone here this morning that's going through a difficult time, it might be a family, it might be a family relation problem, it could be a home problem, work problem, whatever it is, you're not alone. You're not alone. You know, finally, what the disciples did, they woke Jesus up. They woke Jesus from his sleep, and he, you know what, what catch this, he immediately arose and rebuked the wind. Verse 39, then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, to the disciples, <clears throat> why are you so fearful? He says, how is it that you have no faith? He was telling them, we got a plan. We're going to the other side of the lake. They were so fearful, have no faith. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? The important, it is important to note that while the disciples, while they were in control, while they were in charge of the situation, because they were fishermen, they, were, they had the skills, they had the abilities. While they were in charge of the situation, trying to best to save themselves to get out of that mess. You know, the fury of that storm, what was Jesus doing while they were doing all the work? While they were using all those, all their skills, he was resting, he was sleeping. Yes, Jesus was in the stern resting. But as soon as they cast their fears on him, their worries on him, their anxiety, he right away went into action. Right away, he went to action. And uh, <clears throat> it's interesting, because as soon as Jesus got up, when he went into action, they rested. See that? <clears throat> while they were working, while they were doing everything, he was asleep. When they gave him charge, when they gave him control, they rested while he took action. That happens with us as well. Yes, we need to remember that, and this continues truth for our day as well. It is true we have responsibilities, we have skills like the fishermen did and all this, but ultimate control belongs to Jesus. We're in a situation that's so dif difficult. We're going through such a hard time. I've been there in places where I've been. You know, and we, we don't have peace till we hand things over to Jesus. <clears throat> There's nothing impossible for the Lord. The principle works this way, what I'm trying to explain here. You take control, you take charge, you'll rest. God will not bypass your freedom of choice. He will not bypass that. But when we cast our cares upon him, we feel our need. And we cast our cares upon him. And allow God to take control or take charge of a situation you might be going through right now. When you allow him, you rest. And he takes away. He'll come through for you. He's come through for me. He's come through for so many of you that are here this morning. He'll come through. You know what really uh, I found really interesting uh, is that, <clears throat> you know, the disciples were surprised. <clears throat> they were amazed. They, said they were, I mean, they were astonished that um, the wind, the storm, the sea, you know, they obeyed him. You know, they've been with Jesus. They've seen miracles. They've seen all kinds of these. When he fed the 5,000, when he uh, resurrected people. But they were really surprised that he had power 
over nature. Is, you know what this tells me, what it should tell you? There's no limit to God's power. Do you believe that? There's no limit to his power. God is almighty. <clears throat> he can save you, can save me from our anxieties, from our fears, things that we're going through, things that are really heavy on us. Yes, he's almighty. He's, he's, he is everything the Bible says he is. <clears throat> that is what the disciples learned through this experience they went through. They learned, that they learned something new. Even nature responds to him. He, he, he can do anything. God is power, has no limits. And um, I want to just quickly hear, how can we overcome, lessen our fears, anxieties that we're going to meet? I mean, we go through them. They're part of us. <clears throat> that affect us physically, affect us psychologically, emotionally. When we find ourselves in the middle of the storms, you know, we all do. We have situations. Number one, respond what Jesus told the disciples with faith and prayer in the Lord. We must learn to walk in faith daily, daily. You know, God rewards faith. He wants us to put our faith in him, not in storm, not in the problems around us. Hebrews 11, 6 talks about how God rewards faith. Without faith, it is impossible. <clears throat> it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If we seek him in the time of fear and storm, he'll reward that. He will, he will be there for you. There's someone here today. It might be going through a very difficult time. It could be at home, it could be at school, wherever it is. He rewards faith when you step out, when you go out in faith. <clears throat> faith, believe, excuse me, faith believes that God will do what he promised to do. And um, we need to, faith and prayer. You know, uh, we need to believe, we need to have faith in God's promises. There's over, there's about, what was it, over, about close to 3,000 some um, promises in the Bible. And um, <clears throat> how do we claim a promise? Let's say you want to, uh, you find yourself in a fearful situation. You find yourself in a very difficult problem. How do you claim God's promises? It's real simple. Remember the ABCs of prayer. A, B, and C. A stands for ask. Ask, Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks will find, him who knocks, it will be open. That's the A. The B, believe. <clears throat> you believe in Mark eleven twenty four. Whatsoever you desire when you pray. What does it say in the middle there? Believe that you receive it and it's yours. That's a B. The C is for claiming the promise. And why do we claim the promise? You know why? The answer is in the promise. We're told that his promises are enabling. So I'm going to give you an, uh, an example a little later. But we need to step out in faith. Believe. What are the three, uh, what, are, what are they? ABCs of prayer. Ask, believe, and claim it. Now, in other words, you give thanks before you see it, even if it doesn't happen right away. <clears throat> That's faith. And um, if we, like the disciples, put our faith in Jesus when they were in this storm, if we put our faith in the Lord, he'll come through for us. We need to do that. Now, number two, what else do we do to lessen our fear, our anxiety, our worry? What else does the Bible say, say, say to us? Cast all your cares upon you, your worries, your anxieties, your fears, whatever you're going through right now, cast it on them. Yes. He's inviting you to do that. He's inviting me to do that. That is what the disciples did. And what happened? 
They cast their fears and cares and anxieties on Jesus. And what was the result? They experienced peace. And that will happen with us. We need to learn to put our faith, our trust, our anxieties on Jesus. Yes. Another prevention that we find in the Bible is embracing God's love for us. 1 John 4.18 There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. You know the love of God. Do you love God? Do you have a relationship with Him? That's what it takes. He's the source of all absolute security when you feel secure. Yeah, Christ. Consider what John teaches here in, in John uh, 1 John 4, 18 and onward. You know, embracing God's love gives us confidence. And enjoying God's love, what it does, it eliminates that paralyzing fear and insecurity. Yes. And another thing, you know, we can have this kind of uh, love if we build a relationship with Christ. <clears throat> you build a relationship with your spouse or with your friends through contact, through communion. We need to have a daily devotional life where we relate, where we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Daily. But you know what? Some people, oh, that's easy. That is hard. There are so many things that will take your mind off Jesus. There are so many things going on in our lives. <clears throat> I tell you guys, even as a pastor, and you know what? I notice that if I'm so busy sometimes and I neglect that daily relationship with Jesus, I feel it. So we have to have, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, we need to know about his love, his grace, his mercy, his goodness, his kindness. He's a good God. <clears throat> but we need to build that relationship <clears throat> Time for my tea. <clears throat> when you have allergies, it, it's tough. <clears throat> All right. So he's a good God, wonderful God. But we have to have that relationship <clears throat> with him. <clears throat> and he will help us. Yes. Another prevention. We said the first one was Faith and prayer. <clears throat> Excuse me. The second one is casting our cares upon him. He cares for us. He loves us. He wants us to come to him. The third one was embracing his love. The fourth one is right here, God's word. <clears throat> God's word. I don't know about you, but I have found encouragement in this book. It's a good book. Did you know that fear, in the Bible, fear is mentioned 365 times. How many? <clears throat> 365 times. You could say one for each day of the year. <clears throat> yes, 365 times. <clears throat> so God, obviously, he wants Christians, he wants us <clears throat> to get the message to put faith and trust in him. And he will deliver us. He will help us with our anxieties, with our fear. Things we go through as parents. <clears throat> things we go through, through life. We need Jesus. Don't you think so? We need Christ. <clears throat> so his word. Because he's bigger than our storms. God is big. Yes, yes. If today you find yourself, group this big, I find myself, you find yourself going through something in your work, your home, or some fear that's gripping you, God wants to deliver you today, not tomorrow, today. We need to come to him. He is all, what did we say? God is what? Bigger than our storms. He is bigger than our storms that we're going to face in life. And, you know, because of the current state of the world, there's a lot of people really afraid of listening to some people are afraid of war, 
And other peoples are afraid of the famines, the things that are coming in the last days, <clears throat> things that are going to be hitting us. <clears throat> but let's remember that God is all-powerful and that he does what? He fulfills his word. He loves you, <clears throat> loves us, and wants the very, very best for us in the middle of our storms. So let us remember if we want to be able to overcome, lessen our fears and anxieties and our worries, number one, <clears throat> remember, faith and prayer. Claim his promises, the ABCs. Cast, number two, cast your cares upon him. He cares for you. He really does. He really cares for you, what you're going through. He does. He wants the best for you, for me. <clears throat> Three, Embrace his love. Get to know him. Spend time with him. You know, some people ask, <clears throat> pastors then ask, what's our part? We're saved by grace. He paid the price. What's our part? Our part is to stay connected with him. Every day, stay connected with Jesus, <clears throat> and he's going to give you victories. Take time. Read the Bible and embrace his love for us. He's a loving God, a caring God. You know, we need to personalize God's promises. We need to personalize them. What do I mean by that? What am I saying? For example, let's take, let's take Isaiah 41.10, for example. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. In other words, don't be discouraged. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. <clears throat> How do we personalize it? We personalize it like this. <clears throat> Fear not, for I am with you, John, or Mary. Be not dismayed. Don't be discouraged, Mary or John. For I am your God. <clears throat> I will strengthen you. Mary, I will strengthen you. John, I will strengthen you and uphold you. I will help you, it says, and uphold you with my righteous right hand. We need to personalize his promises. We just read them. No, personalize it. Yes. Fear not, for I am with you. Who else? Joseph, John, we mentioned John. God is with you. Personalize his promises. Make them yours. And you're going to feel something special. You will. When you make it personal, <clears throat> fear not, for I am with you. We can pers personalize not only Isaiah 41, all his promises. <clears throat> we can make them ours. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the lesson we can learn from the disciples even though Jesus was their last option, <clears throat> he wasn't their first. They tried fighting the storms. That happens to us as well. <clears throat> Sometimes he's not our first. But we could avoid a lot of problems if we go first to Jesus. To give him all our cares, all our worries, all our anxiety. We go first to Jesus. And he'll come through for us. So let's learn that. And you know what? <clears throat> Even... If you don't make him your first choice, like the disciples did, but you go to him, he will right away take action. He will help you. He's that kind of a loving, caring God. So, <clears throat> my message this morning, is Jesus is bigger than our fears, our worries, our anxieties. We see it in the Bible. We see it in these stories. They're for us. Those stories are for us. <clears throat> so may God help you to remember that God loves you and he's bigger than your storms. There's no limit to his what he can do. God bless you. <clears throat>